national languages built in South Africa. They have 500. They have 500, 500 national languages. 500 dialects. We're, we're advocating that the person who wants the citizenship should be able to speak the national language, not the 500 dialects that these people speak. More time, guys. seconds. Arbitrary decisions 
and prevent the impact of human rights violations from solving, in addition to the not, uh, inability to make change in a country for any issues involved, such as human rights violations, or escape from political instability, as well as the ability to vote. And moving on to her case. Her whole case revolves around the fact that citizenship is a privilege. We agree to that. However, for this clash, we need to understand that these governments won't be able to provide any protection. They won't have any incentive to increase or extend any of the rights that these migrants will be able to receive because of the fact that uh, discrimination will occur and we're not able to consider what's happening in other countries, the source countries, the most, most important countries we need to consider in order for them to develop. Then moving on to her second contention, she basically talks about the social conflict involved. However, these uh, she's, uh, we need to understand that there will be more discrimination involved if there's an increase in illegal immigration. As you can know, the illegal immigration, illegal immigrants take up the jobs that these citizens do take and it will be a burden on the economy. And statistics show that the direct cost of educating the children of illegal aliens is somewhere between 25, 29, and 39 billion dollars a year. In addition to that, her second contention mainly talks about ensuring protections. However, cross apply this with my third contention that basically talks about the importance of citizenship and how these countries don't want to give any extensive rights because of the fact that they have an obligation and use the test as a disguise. As you can see, there's a burden on these uh, on these countries too. They don't want to pay for these rights that they want to extend for the migrants. Um, statistics show that the paper alone, according to the UN, the United Nations, costs two thousand dollars, two thousand four hundred dollars for just one piece of paper. We need to consider each dialect that's um, needs to be considered, like as my partner stated, the five hundred dialects involved in the Philippines, which my opponent conceded to, and how she said the government will decide, which only gives further support for our third contention. In addition to that, uh, there's no reason why the government will uh, allow them to give uh, uh, protections. And there's a contradiction in her argument, saying that she wants, she's in support of these oral tests. However, if the citizens are not able to communicate with each other because like, the right of vote is going to be infringed upon, then there's no reason to show that communication is going to be effective. Rather, we must consider the effects and the impacts involved of the source countries and the brain drain that's involved, in addition to the increase of illegal immigration, cost of citizenry, and the importance of citizenship that needs to be maintained. Thank you. Give you a One minute, guys. Do you want more? Another minute. Well, you see, the new language itself, it's involved communication. 
but what ha what's happening is that this communication isn't going to solve anything because these rights are not going to be extended by the government. They have no obligation to extend these rights because of the fact that there's money involved and paper alone costs two thousand four hundred dollars okay, for a single piece of paper. What can you do with the writing when you learn a new language? See that's what, why, why, why under, your, under your topicality that it needs to be an oral test, this includes the fact that these migrants won't be able to write. Wouldn't you agree that co communication is the most important thing when you learn a new language? Shouldn't be able to shouldn't you be able to communicate with other people when you get a job or Yeah, we agree to the fact that communication is important. However, it's not going to be absolved. Communication alone isn't going to solve for anything. It's not going to solve for the brain drain involved. It's not going to solve for the increase in illegal immigration. It's not going to solve for the cost of citizenship. Okay, what is the difference between refugee and citizen? Refugees, they escape from asylum as seen with like the Japan earthquake, current events like this. Are you aware of the fact that refugee get us refugee status? Yes, I, I'm aware of what a refugee is, as I just explained. No, are you aware of the fact that refugees get a refugee status, but then the citizenship is different than Refugees. See, the problem is with your case, if we allow this language barrier to occur, the refugees, what's going to happen to them? These refugees that are escaping conflict aren't able to go into these countries. They're not going to be able to have a better life. They're going to be subject to this abuse, subject to these current disasters, subject to this economic catastrophe that they are faced with. Okay. Is becoming a citizen different than claiming refugee status? Correct? Can you read the question again? Is become, becoming a citizen Um, no, what's happening is that they need, the refugee needs to claim citizenship under this resolution. That's what we're talking about today. Okay. Um, why will illegal migrants take the language test if they're illegal? No, what I'm saying is that well, if, migrants, if migrants, migrants can't pass this language test, obviously they're going to come illegally. That's their only way. If they're going to help their family, their child that's in despair, that they can't feed, every day, then obviously they're going to find economic opportunity in other countries and come illegally. That's the whole point of my convention. No, you have stated that illegal migrants will take the language test. However, what are you No, what I said is migrants in general will take this language test. And if they fail, due to my reasons that I provided, because they're poor, because they're uneducated, as seen with the women, they're going to come illegally. That's the solution.
guys have 30 seconds, okay? Language test solely based on the basic language and needs of communication. 
It's not like test is SAT or TOEFL where they have to think uh, think like crazily. Uh, all they have to do is use their brain a bit, and then they'll be, they'll be granted citizenship, but where they will be uh, avoided from exploitation and vulner vulnerability. Therefore, uh, their whole first contention falls for the fact that our case actually actually um, supports the pro side of the of the uh, of the resolution. And the second second. They also talked about the, uh, not giving extended rights for migrants and how it's uh, a secret hideout to actually reject migrants. But as I've stated, migrants are really not relevant to the resolution, as although they might think a majority of people who would gain citizens are migrants, we actually believe we, we don't want to focus on migrants, but, but, but actually the people who need the citizenship. So, so the wordings of migrants are really false. Um, therefore, we have proven to you that first, the commitment that uh, migrants need and the social conflict, policy, and protection of rights are the real, are the real reasons why the resolution was passed. Thank you. You guys want prep time? Oh, yeah. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Take a minute.
However, this includes the brain drain for the source country. So what we're saying is that we shouldn't have these uh, language barriers for the trust. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Do you guys want time? Yeah. One minute, fifteen seconds. Uh, increased illegal immigration. 
if people who take these tests, the migrants who take these tests try it and they fail to take the test, but they're escaping from political, um, from political unrest, from an environmental disaster, then that means that they are still going to be, uh, they're still have to get into a different country and then they're going to come illegally. And my partner already discussed the cost of illegal immigration, which amounted to $113 billion at the federal, state, and local levels. Second, we also uh, argue about brain drain. I think my opponent doesn't understand the brain drain argument because he said in the last crossfire, oh, brain drain is harmful to the source country. Yes, that, that means it's an impact because it's harmful. That's why it is an impact. Please end the, I'll explain the watch behind this. We're saying that, look, if only the rich and the educated can pass this test and become citizens and leave the country, that means that you're leaving the poor and uneducated in the country and you're never giving the source country a chance to develop. So now basically what you have on our side is that they haven't uh, blocked our, or they haven't uh, blocked any of our rebuttals, meaning that they haven't brought in rejoinder, so their entire case has already been blocked, but they never even addressed our rebuttals against their case. And what we said in the most first that the government has no incentive to help non citizens that's our first point. And he said that citizens must show commitment. Well, the problem with showing commitment is that they said, oh, we're only going to consider the people already in that country. Why would they have to show commitment to that country? So obviously, we talked about migrants in the first place. Second, we said that uh, against their, um, how, their, how their, their plan to stop social conflict because only people were able to speak the language of being in that country so there'd be no need to discriminate. Well, that's because only the rich and educated people are coming to that country. And we already reiterated that in our first speech in the rebuttal section of our speech. So this means that they're effectively not arguing against any of our points. Whenever we take rebuttals, they simply ignore them and then move on to try to uh, talk about top talk saying that migrants aren't even included in resolution. Now, uh, the last thing I want to talk about is the protection of rights, the contradiction that they ignore. They said that, oh, we can, we can protect rights because people can communicate, they can have a conversation. Well, are you going to have a conversation with the 12 million migrants in the USA who want to vote? Obviously not. So for all these reasons, we urge you to vote for the negative side. Thank you. cross act dude. Oh, my bad. Yeah. Whoops. Yeah, that is a Correct. Okay, so the migrants have to claim that they have 
have lived in the country, correct? They have been to the point. So if in order to verify that they have lived in the country, they cannot be an illegal migrant, correct? They cannot okay. be an illegal okay. migrant to be verified. I think you're misunderstanding. No, I I would like to yes or no for an answer, please. Time's up. Three more minutes.
however, we have stated that um, they have the opportunity to get jobs if they com communicate. However, if they write, if the board write, um, they don't have the opportunity to get, to get jobs because um, they can't um, develop their skills. And so this subpoint falls. And there's a second subpoint, which was uh, they are under education. Educator, however, we would like to uh, remind the judge or and the opponents that government they have government support. They they uh, get education from the governments. The governments they give support to the migrants or people that are learning new edu new language. And they have stated the uh, argument about brain drain. However, we um, they are focusing their argument with migration, however, it, oh, um, if we pass this resolution, it won't cause a brain drain. Only migration will cause brain drain. So this at some point falls also. So this contention falls clearly. And um, going to our contention, our first contention was that we, the migrants or the people who are learning new languages, they have to show commitment to the country. Um, they if they should show what, why they want to be one of the citizens of the country. However, um, our ones have stated that, um, oh, yeah. If we communicate, if we pick the language that's like communication, it is more efficient to the uh, society. However, if we talk about written tests, they can't be efficient to the society because they're not helping anything. Um, and. Her, so this convention still stands, and our second convention, which was social conflict, however, our opponents did not um, successfully rebut to this point because we have submitted the populist matters and social conflicts. If they do not get to communicate, they will get the migrants or the people that are learning new um, languages. They are not. They're going to get discriminated because they can't communicate with the language that exists in their country. So th this contention still stands. And um, there can, our third contention, which was uh, we can protect rights if they communicate. And, uh, we, oh, this contention still stands because um, if they, if the migrants or the people that are learning new languages, if they get to communicate, they can protect their rights. However, they can't protect their rights with written stuff. They can't, and so this convention still stands. And they can't, um, with with writing, you can't protect your own rights. However, communicating, you can communicate with the people that are discriminating these people. And um, our voting rights, uh, our opponents did not rebut this point. Voting rights, you need to be able to communicate to understand the languages. However, written, you will, written, there is written things in voting rights. However, you need to be able to understand what they are saying. So the opponents still stand. Thank you. Yes, you can have four minutes.
about 35 seconds. Again, that the majority of 
majority of people, majority of migrants that are getting away from these places that have a, that are have catastrophes that are be, that they're being repressed. They would they would the, uh, the places where they pushing they're pushing them or else they will die in there. The, the majority of them are poor. The majority of them have learning disabilities. The majority of them have children. The majority of them are are illiterate in um in the the, the language. So how can we? Solely depend on a language test in order for them to gain citizenship. I think there's a lot more that we have to do instead of a language test. Thirdly, the language test must consider the written portion, like I said before, because the oral opens the door for our arbitrary limits, the need for economic opportunity, or uh, a care of source and receiving country. And I'll just like to uh, weigh our impacts again and compare it to theirs. Uh, they stated our impact is that they're afraid they will happen. <laughs> Alright, thank you guys very much. Cross the floor, shake hands.
Once you guys, you know what those things are for, right? Yeah. Give us feedback on it and then put it into this envelope and give it to the runner outside. You want to show it to us. Okay, so um, you guys give feedback first. I give feedback last. Oh. Ladies first. Okay. Yes. All right. I'll take the interview. Okay. Right. Um, <laughs> people are very interesting, very uh, stimulating. Uh, what do you call the argument from both sides? Okay. Um, Good definition, um, all right, and good points from this side. And uh, you were able to pick out uh, pertinent flaws and all that, all right. But uh, you guys were able to do a, um, a comeback, right? Um, me, you, did, you you handled the cross examination very well. I think you have to be some a lawyer or something like that, right? So go yeah. down, all right, and. Um, I, I actually, uh, the points that I gave both teams uh, were very, very close, all right? And um, the difference is a very small margin. So I shall not put you guys through the tor torture. And um, I gave, I considered it to the comment, right? Okay. Okay, so uh, I was very really satisfied with this debate, and it was really hard to uh, make some conclusion and to decide uh, who, uh, who would win this uh, debate. Uh, First, uh, uh, also, uh, I like to say that uh, um, my uh, my decision is uh, different from uh, the uh, first uh, gender. Uh, I uh, gave the vote to the negative team uh, because uh, I think that uh, okay, one thing was I think was missing in the in the negative team in the case of negative team, and it was kind of a control plan. It was. Sometimes it was hard to say uh, what, the, what are you staying for, what were you, what were you standing for. But uh, you, you didn't point out uh, this mess or kind of mess and you just uh, went with the flow. And uh, for example, you uh, didn't react to, uh, to the brain drain just uh, at the end and it was really, really uh, late. And also, uh, you didn't want to admit that the also migrant can apply for a, a citizenship, and also say that there are uh, other peoples, and you never mentioned uh, who are the other people. Uh, uh, so uh, I uh, had to admit that the, uh, uh, their case was, or their refuge was uh, kind of better. Um, so therefore, I gave a lot to the negative team. Okay, so this becomes dramatic again. Um, <laughs> uh, side factor. I will tell you the result first and then we will talk about it, okay? So we don't have to have drama as long as you promise to listen to what I say. Um, you don't have to accept it. So I gave the win to the affirmative team. Um, and this is why I think there were two, I agree with the things that my fellow colleagues have said. I think there were two large groups. I think one area which you guys clashed a lot was on testing. So the nature of testing, the validity of this testing, the efficiency of this testing, right? Um, from what I could get from the debates, what the affirmative wanted was an oral conversation-based test. Um, and the response from the negative seemed to be initially, and somewhat defended throughout the debate, that an oral test is insufficient, uh, that we need a written test. Or it seemed initially a written test would be better than an oral test, and then later it all seemed maybe a written test in addition to an oral test. Right? And then there were lots of attacks on the subjectivity and so on and so forth. Um, there were two things to evaluate here and why it's important in the debate. I think then it became one, you know, uh, back and forth about which should be prioritized. Do we actually need to have a written test or we have an oral test? To, to I slightly went with the uh, affirmative on this, that in the long run, while I agree with you, you need to be able to write your resume and your ballot. I think it's a little bit more important for you to do 
needs to speak to other people or you know have conversations. I think that was the basic social conflict idea they were talking about. Uh, but more than that, I think why where this was really more important to me is I think a lot of your attacks based on the feasibility or the implementation of this, the ability of governments to do this, and the fairness of testing, right? So like. Uh, people, what about variety and dialects? What about children and families? What about people who are hard illiterate? Uh, and, and if all those things are true, it creates a brain drain. And what about people who have learning disabilities? But you guys were also defending a test. So all these criticisms applied to you. And I think the second speaker rightly pointed out when he said you have a contradiction, right? That you also want to test these people. And to some extent, your test is more complicated. So if I'm illiterate, that doesn't mean I can't speak. I may be able to speak. But that definitely means I can't write, right? So uh, all the criticisms that you have then applied to yourselves, but all, but to some extent to a larger level, right? So more people are going to be excluded, more rights, blah, 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 blah. right? So I thought uh, when I weighed those things across, to some extent, all the different harms. So while you had all so many of these harms, those harms were not unique to the R case. Those harms are also present in your case, and to some extent larger uh, in your case, okay? Then second thing I thought I looked at was the sort of impact of what this is going to create. On this side of the house, it was uh, commitments, how we want to value commitment and social conflict and, uh, to protect people's rights. Over here, there's discrimination, brain drain, illegal immigration, and an extension of or reduction of rights of immigrants. I think some of the areas in which you guys clashed was not completely complete, right? I think the idea of the commitment or social conflict is kind of dropped at second somewhat brought up at third um, and that was sad because I think that those were, were good points that were set up well which they didn't directly clash with but you guys needed to emphasize right um, over here I think there was a lot of clash on the feasibility uh, the topicality but that's how I explained how that impacted uh, stuff um, I like the idea of how this would reduce the extension of rights of migrants like, I think that was something that applied to language testing right like now this is another excuse that that company countries would give to re to reduce the number of people that you get to uh, become citizens. I think that was an angle that you guys get to support more and would have been a lot more effective. Um, some things that I think um, generally people was got a little bit confused about, and I agree with Claudia that this debate is about migrants. I don't think it was helpful for you to say no, it's not about migrants, right? Because they're right. Who else is going to apply for citizenship? Not citizens. Um, but I think also you guys kind of confused refugees, migrants, citizens and put all these people together. So I think it's fair for them to say if you are fleeing from your life, you, you're not going to be, we're not going to make you take an uh, English test to protect you. We'll protect you, but that doesn't mean you become a citizen, you'll get asylum. Right? Uh, and the same thing, like majority of people running away from their countries are either refugees or migrants, and then after that they maybe will become citizens. So I think that context maybe should have been set up clearer. The stuff that you were saying in your cross X that, you know, don't you know people need to stay for a while, before. like those things need to be emphasized and developed rather than assume that everybody's thinking about it uh, in the same way from the start. Right? So um, based on those things, based on um, the harms also applying to your case but also larger to some extent, uh, and some of the major things that you wanted to prove, I think the affirmative team to some extent showed that this test can still be valuable and lead to better societies. I went with the affirmative team. You guys have questions? If you have questions about the debates or you want personal or individual feedback, I'm sure you can come and speak to all of us. Right? Um, yeah, sure. Well, you, uh, kind of do the summary the How should you do the summary? How should you format it out? I'm not sure. I'm not sure. 